As discussed in the previous video, trailing period returns are useful for seeing the long-term aspect of investing. However, what it doesn't reveal is the short-term volatility you may encounter. Let's look at the example we used in the previous video, the returns of the Vanguard S&P 500 for the periods ending May 31st, 2011. Let's look specifically at the trailing 5-year return of 3.23%. A $1,000 investment made on June 1st, 2006 would have grown to $1,172 over that 5-year period. Not great, but at least we didn't lose any money, right? True, but only if we had the temperament to stick with the investment for all 5 years. Look how our $1,000 grew month by month. Ever ride a roller coaster? How readily apparent is it from looking at trailing period returns of this fund that, within that 5-year period, the S&P 500 declined by nearly 51% over 16 months, or that over the next 27 months the fund had not yet recouped its losses? Not so apparent from the trailing period returns, calculated as of May 31st, 2011, but it would have been apparent had you looked at those same trailing period returns, calculated on February 28th, 2009. The ability to see trailing period returns over multiple period ending dates is the advantage of evaluating rolling period returns. That will be the topic of our next video.